Welcome to an incredible journey with internationally renowned lawyer of attraction, Paula Kidd Casey. Applying the skills gained over 40 years of practicing law, Paula uses facts, logic, and science to prove the validity of the law of attraction. Join Paula each week as she explores unique concepts, allowing you to rediscover the wisdom of the ancient masters, all while weaving in the science that proves magic really does happen. If you yearn for a life change or want to rediscover your passion, then share the path with Paula and begin to love your journey every step of the way. Hello, I'm Paula Kid Casey, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. The next hour is my show, The Law of Attraction, and I want to welcome everyone here. I'm especially excited about today's program because I have on one of the, um, at least the United States uh, expert in gratitude, if not maybe an international expert in gratitude. His name is Tony Child. Tony Child is the CEO of Elevated Worldwide, which is an international company. Uh, he started that in 2014, so it's just exploded in the last four years. And what he has done is he has decided to emphasize how important gratitude is on our journey in the law of attraction. And I want you all to know that the word gratitude may not sound like an extremely exciting word, and it might be benign and ordinary and boring to you. But I'm going to tell you that he's going to tell you that it is one of the most important, if not the, the most important concept that we need to actually understand when we're talking about the law of attraction. Tony is the leading expert on the law of gratitude and is most widely known for his three levels of gratitude, which we're going to be talking about. He and his team are on the cutting edge of developing tools and technologies that actually shift organizational culture. So not only does he teach this to individuals, he takes this into organizations, into businesses, into corporations. And with this information regarding gratitude, it changes the culture. It changes the, the, the profits, it changes the, the bottom line, it changes the uh, retention rate, it changes everything. And if you can understand how important gratitude is, and take my class on gratitude, which is Tony's class, or get a hold of him, it's a quick, easy class. It's going to change everything in your life. It's the foundation of being able to understand what the law of attraction is. So Tony has done a lot of independent research on positive psychology. He is a voracious reader. He has done a lot of information gathering. He's got data. He's got verified documentation that this shit works. And I am so thankful that he has agreed to be on my program. If you have not listened all the way through on my other programs, I encourage you. This is one you really want to do that because it can, it can shift your life. It can give you enough information that you will want to go out and find out more information about this because it will shift the way that you look at everything. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Tony Child and we will be right back with Tony. And we are back with one of my favorite people, Tony Child. I have known Tony for about three years. He and I are both consultants for the Bob Proctor program, Thinking Into Results. And uh, I was very impressed with him when I met him, and I'm even more so now because of how he's taken his life and his company. And I told you in the introduction more about him, but I do want to welcome Tony, and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. I, I really am so excited to be with you and to share a few thoughts on, on uh, what it is that I've learned. But most importantly, I just, uh, I really admire you and what you do. And, and uh, so certainly excited to be here and, and for your listeners and viewers, if they're seeing this, I don't know if they're seeing this or not. But, they will. Uh, they will. For viewers, they're gonna they will. Okay. So you're going to be on YouTube and you're going to be uh, on obviously a podcast, but, but no, I, I just, I'm thrilled to be here. So thank you. Well, thank you. Well, you know, I want people to, to understand that they're going to have to stay through the entire program because we're going to talk about gratitude and gratitude can kind of have a benign quality to it. I think it, people underrate it a lot. I think they want to talk about being wealthy. They want to talk about being abundant. You know, they want to talk about, you know, having the love of their lives and you talk about gratitude and they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's really nice, but give me the good part. <laughs> you know, give me to the meat of this stuff. And, and what, 
and, and we have taught thinking the results, both you and I have for years, and it is pretty much a, a program that is based on um, setting a goal and achieving that goal. And it's pretty much a professional business program. And I think you and I both have decided we want to take our lives and our programs to, to another degree and another level. And I am so impressed on how you have done that with gratitude. And, and it's a concept that I teach in my program that we've all taught in our programs. And you spend like a week on it. It's a concept. You tell them about it. And then you kind of move on and it becomes one of the 10 or 12 different concepts that we're teaching. But what I've realized from just working with you in the past month and working with this material and going back and kind of revisiting what I always teach is that gratitude is the foundation. It is the cornerstone of everything and that people have to understand how important that is. I remember watching The Secret in 2006. I don't, I don't know, Tony, if you're old enough to remember The Secret. <laughs> you're a youngin. But um, anyway, <laughs> you know, and they said gratitude is the attitude. And I'm going, okay, it rhymes. You know, those two things rhyme. But I'm still thinking, okay, I'll, I'll be grateful, but give me the stuff. You know, give me the stuff first, and then I'll be grateful. And um, and, and that's, that's like, completely opposite, right? Because I think you've got such a great program and I want everybody to kind of hear how Tony has figured out how important gratitude is. And, and uh, I want him to talk about um, how he has figured that out because he does a lot of his own research. He, he has data that we're gonna be able to present. And I am now one of his consultants and I'm also teaching this, this program too, as well as some of my other programs. But I really think this is the first one and. Tony's convinced me of this, and, and um, this is the first one we need to teach because once they get this, once they get this, I think everything else kind of falls into place. So, Tony, tell us about how you kind of got into this, the topic of gratitude, and how you found out how important it was. No, I really appreciate that. So, so as you mentioned, um, I I have read a ton of books um, on you know some of the most successful people in the early 19th century early 20th century, like I have read all of their books. I've read uh, all the spiritual books, the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita and, and a bunch of other books. Like I've, I've, I've well read in a lot of the, the popular books and even spiritual books. I'm, I'm very well read in also the psychology books of today, the Harvard studies and the, and the Penn, um, you know, Dr. Seligman out of Penn. And uh, he's kind of the godfather right now of positive psychology. And so what, what I've found is that everyone will tell you that, that gratitude is an important ingredient to positivity, to the law of attraction, uh, to happiness, but yet there's no one out there that I know of that will boldly declare, as I will declare to you today, that, that gratitude is not just an important ingredient to happiness, but gratitude is the foundation to happiness. It is the foundation of the law of attraction. It is the foundation of all positivity in your life. It is the foundation of abundant living. Without gratitude, it is impossible to be happy. And uh, it is impossible to be wealthy. And now, again, now you mentioned it, and I really appreciate you mentioning it, Paula. It's kind of this fluff word. It's kind of this, yeah, yeah, but let's get, <laughs> yeah, to, the right. uh -huh. let's get to the real potatoes here, right? And, and yes, it, 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 we do need to get to the, the meat, and, but I'm telling you that the meat is gratitude. Um, so you and I, we, we've kind of traveled the world, and, and, and we've done a lot with, with some of the best people in the world that teach law of attraction, that teach positive psychology, um, and Bob Proctor is one of them. That's a, a mentor that you and I share, and I love Bob. And, and uh, you know, I was one of his top consultants for several years as I was traveling around the world and, and, and really helping people. Um, understand the law of attraction, how it works, and paradigms, and, and, and the way that you think. And here's what I found. I, the very first thing we teach people in a program of, of Bob's called Thinking into Results, the very first thing we teach people is, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What's your dream? What's the big goal you're going after? And I don't know about you, Paula, but with me and the people I was helping, it was like pulling teeth. It was, to get like them deer, to it was like deer in the headlights. They had no deer idea. Deer in the headlights. Yeah, they had no idea what they I were. have, I don't know what I want. I know. And, and I know. I, 
we, we would spend weeks with them. Like it's supposed to be a week to two weeks on less than one. I literally would probably spend three, four, five weeks with people before we'd even get to less than two because it was so hard for them to think beyond logic and to think beyond memory. Well, and, 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 and their paradigms, yeah. their belief system, I can only think what I want that I think I can do. And I bet we were at less than six or seven before people started going, oh, I can think bigger than that. I can go after that kind of a dream. So yeah, I, I agree. I, I know that's where people want to start because that's where people want to finish. But what you yeah. have gotten out and what I am so thrilled to be a part of is that there's this, there's this foundation we got to lay before we can get to that part. And that's, that's yeah. where the new program comes in. Yeah, and, and the foundation that literally we have to lay is, is this not enough mentality that people suffer with. And um, how do you know, like if you're a listener or you're a viewer right now, how do you know, like, okay, well, Tony, that's okay. You say that it's this not enough mentality. How do I know I'm not in a, in a not enough mentality? Let me ask you a couple of questions. And if you say yes to any of these questions, you might be suffering with some ingratitude in your life. That's, that's the point of this. So, so as in the past seven days, have you thought to yourself or, or had a feeling in your life of, you know what? I, I don't have enough love in my life. I, I need some more love in my life. I, I don't feel like I have enough love in my relationships. My, my wife or my, my husband doesn't love me enough. My kids don't love me. There's not enough kindness in the world. That, that with love and kindness, you believe that there's literally not enough in your life. Um, have you thought in the last week to yourself as you're going into a project, I don't have enough time. There's not enough hours in the day to get everything done I need to get done. I, I don't have enough time to get this project done. I don't have enough time to spend with my wife or my husband or my kids, I, I don't have enough time. There's not enough hours in the day. Or as you're going to make a big purchase, do you think to yourself, I, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money for that purchase. I don't have money, enough money for that vacation. I don't have enough money to start that business. I, I don't have enough money. Or you want to run a marathon, but you're thinking to yourself, well, I, I don't have enough good health. My health stinks. I don't have enough good health. I can't run. I can't even walk up the stairs, let alone run. Like <laughs> what, what, I can't run. Like I, I don't have enough good health. Or you're going into your career and you're thinking, I don't have enough help. There's not enough help in my, my, my job. I don't have enough prospects. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that. And what it's coming from, if you answered yes to any of those questions, which the majority of people do, if they're really honest with themselves. And they're going to answer yes to from every a, question, right? Because they think there's yeah. something else out there that they're trying to get to, right? That, but, they're, but they're coming from a place of, in my life right now, I'm not enough. Right. That's the ultimate thing. When they look in the mirror and they look in the mirror and they, they think to themselves, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not wealthy enough. I'm not enough. And what I've found is that gratitude is the switch from not enough to more than enough. I love and it, that. And it, has to, and it has to be, Paula, and I think you saw this, it has to be the attitude of gratitude. And so as you think about, well, Tony, what's the attitude of gratitude? Attitude by, by our mentor, Bob Proctor. I love it. It, it. He shares about what is attitude. Attitude is the compilation. If you say, hey, Paula, I really love your attitude. You got a really positive attitude. In essence, what I'm saying is I love the way you think. I love the way that I feel around you. And I love the way that you act. You, you're just a very positive person. It's your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions combined together and that means that you've got a really powerful attitude, positive attitude. Somebody has a negative attitude, it means they think stinky, they think stinky, they feel stinky, and they act stinky. And <laughs> I, I, stinky you know, is that, that's a professional word. Stinky is a professional word. I'm sure it is. <laughs> yes, yes, very stinky, okay. right? Uh, I, I could say more words, but I won't. No, no, that's um, good. The point is, is they, and, and so if I have an attitude of gratitude, what it is is that I think gratitude, I feel gratitude, and I act in gratitude. And, and we have a lot of these words that are kind of thrown around in the world today of um, thankfulness and appreciation and generosity and gratitude. And, and I had an epiphany one day, Paula, that, that the gratitude is like this umbrella. And there are three levels to gratitude. And most people only practice gratitude on the first level, which is thinking thankfulness, writing things in a thankful journal, in a gratitude journal of things that I'm thankful for, which, by the way, is really powerful. But when you get to the second and third levels of gratitude, of feeling appreciation and acting in generosity, that's when you really start to shift from not enough to more than enough. 
I don't know if that no, answered any of that, your questions there. Yeah, that's perfect. I want to go back a little bit to that I, I'm not enough. So one of the reasons I think we always, we did, you and I, when we had our, our, when we were teaching our programs, is getting people to set these goals and these amazing C-type goals, these big dream goals, is because they didn't think they were enough. You know, that they mm -hmm. didn't think that they were worthy to have anything. And until you address that, which is what I've been saying forever, the self-image, until you address that, that I am enough, but then you take one step back. How do you, how do you address that? How do you address I am enough? How do you address that self-image? Because it's this you know, self-fulfilling prophecy because that's what you believe, that's what you've been told. You have nothing else to compare yourself to than what you have compared yourself to till now. And what I was pretty much blown away with when I started doing your program, and I've just done it for maybe six, eight weeks, is, is there's three levels of it. And when you get to the third level and you realize how much you have to be thankful for and your cup is overflowing, you want to give it away. And once you start giving things away, and that's your third level, that's the generosity. And I, I know we're going to talk about more. That's when you start feeling you're enough. And I'm just amazed how this weaves into everything. And, and um, I, I'm just so thrilled that you put this together. So kind of tell us some more about the program and how it's going to help people reach that dream that they've always wanted. Yeah, no, I, I, I uh, appreciate your willingness to allow me to share and elaborate a little bit more about, about this program. And, and um, before I do that, I, if you, if you wouldn't mind, some, some of your listeners, some of your viewers might, might uh, understand this, this story I'm going to share. I'm going to share a story. Some call it a parable. I call it a story, but it's the, it's the same thing, okay? So I want you to imagine that, and by the way, there, I, I am a huge believer in the master teachers of, of the universe, meaning, you know, you've got Muhammad, you've got uh, Buddha, you've got Gandhi, you've got Jesus Christ, you've got some of these people that, that understood universal laws to perfection. And then they taught them. And uh, one of my favorites uh, is Jesus Christ. Like I love, I love reading about his life and, and the way he taught. And he taught a parable. He taught a story. And I'm just going to share this story. And if you resonate with it, great. If you don't, don't worry. It's, just, it's a story. That's all it is. Um, but there was a person that had five bags of gold, five talents. The, a master gave one person five bags of gold. He gave another person two bags of gold. He gave another person one bag of gold. The person that had five bags of gold, he went out and he doubled his gold and he brought it back. And the person that had two bags of gold, he doubled his gold and he brought back four bags. So 10 and four bags were brought back to the master. The master said to both of them, well done. You've been good and you've been faithful. Go and rest. And, and you're going to have an abundance of all things. And so they leave. Now, the person that had one bag of gold, in the, in the, when he received the bag of gold, he was afraid. And so he hid the gold. He dug a hole in the ground and he hid the gold so he wouldn't lose it. And so he held on to it because he didn't want to lose it because he had created this image in his mind of his master that was mean and angry. And he knew that, that if he lost it, this, this master would be really mad at him. And so he hid it. The master came back, asked for his, what he did with his gold. He brought back the one bag of gold and he called him a wicked and slothful servant, apathetic or lazy. And, uh, and he took the bag. Now, if the master would have held on to it, well, the master would have been the apathetic one and, and the slothful one. So he didn't, he didn't hold the bag. He took the bag and he gave it. He gave it to the person that had 10 bags. So now that person that had 10 bags get, got 11 bags. And by the way, he wasn't expecting it. It just landed in his lap. Just boom. Here's your, here's your bag of gold. Now, as we think about this story, sometimes we think, well, God or universe is a fair God. It's a fair universe. Let me tell something that I want all of you to understand. Universe is never fair. It is always just. And it follows law with precision. God is just and follows law with precision. This is the reason why that bag of gold was not given to the person that had four. We're not in a world of fairness. We're in a world of precision and law. And when we're obedient to laws, then amazing things can happen. If I take this pen and I drop it, I know exactly what's going to happen because of laws. Now, if I take a, a, a balloon of helium and I drop it, I know what's going to happen. It's going to go up. Why? Because helium is lighter than air. And so it's going to go up. It defies the law of gravity or works with the law of gravity. But the point is there's laws and there's laws that govern everything. Right. And there's a law that governs abundance. 
And this story is the story that Jesus Christ uses to teach you and me and everyone on the planet how to be rich, how to live a rich life, how to understand the law of attraction. And he shares it in one verse. And if you go back to the Bible, you can go to the Bible, Matthew 25, 29. And I'm going to just paraphrase the verse. In essence, it says this. If you walk around life with a not enough attitude, the things that you have a not enough attitude are going to get taken from you. But when you walk around life with a more than enough attitude, the things that you have a more than enough attitude about, you will have multiplied. So if I walk around life with a not enough attitude regarding time, then by law, God takes away the time I do have and he gives it to the person that believes they have more than enough time. And the same goes with money, the same goes with love, the same goes with resources, it goes with everything. This is why poverty and generational riches happen, is because it's a habitual thought pattern that's gone through. Now, what, how can I break it? I'm in this pattern. If you're thinking to yourself, great, Tony, I'm in this pattern. I don't believe I have enough of anything. Then you have to go through what I call the three levels of gratitude. And this is kind of the, the point of this question is, what is these three levels? It's the shift when you start to see life through a more than enough lens. You have to start thinking thankful thoughts. And by the way, research shows when I just think thankful thoughts and I put them in a journal, I'm two to 4% happier than those that don't. Two to now, 4% if I can happy, take, right? Two to 4%. So just if I want a 4% happiness spike in my minute right now, I get out a journal and I write down a few things I'm thankful for. And, and I can get my that's spike. that's not nice. But that's not huge, right? That's not huge. No. Nice. Not huge. And that's why people that are writing in their thankful journeys are not seeing that big of results because they're staying yeah. on the first level that you're going to be talking about. So, the, but, but it's, but the point is it's still powerful. Right. It's just two to 4% powerful. Like if you really want to change, you got to get out of a thought of thankfulness and get into the feeling of appreciation. Now appreciation comes from the root word appreciate. And for those in the finance world, if an asset appreciates, its value goes up. How do I take my thought of thankfulness and increase its value? The greatest way you can do that is by sharing it, getting it out of your head and into the ether. I, I say to Paula, you know what, Paula? I really appreciate being on this phone call with you. I appreciate you. You make me laugh. Like every time I'm with you, I just laugh. Uh, you are a wonderful woman. And I just appreciate the fact that every time I see you and, and I can just smile at you and I just smile and laugh. Like I just, because you are so, sure you are just a funny, funny. With very nice intentions and he's not laughing at oh, yeah. me. He's laughing. No, at me. no. I know. Like the things that come out of your mouth, they just make me laugh. Like you are just a very bold woman. And you are a very no-nonsense woman. And uh, I just, I really appreciate that about you. I really do. See, now what just happened here is I just shared that. I shared maybe a thought of thankfulness of what I thought about, Paula. And now I've just shared it. And I put it out there. And what happened is if I do this and I do it genuinely and I do it with emotion, my, my happiness spikes where on the first level it was 2 to 4%. On the second level of gratitude is between 4 and 19%. Wow. Which is pretty incredible. Pretty incredible to, to get, me, get into a habit of expressing appreciation. And so when you're thinking thankfulness, you're keeping it inside. This is what I figured out mm -hmm. with you. When you're, when you're um, giving people appreciation, you're sharing it, right? Because I felt it when you said that. I didn't feel anything when you were just saying, I'm going to write a thankful journey. But when you actually express the appreciation to me, now it's traveled through the ether, and now, now I'm feeling it. So now it's on two different levels, what gratitude has yeah. done. It's changed you, and it's changed me. And so if I get into this constant energy of appreciation, which, by the way, is one of the highest energies you can get in next to love, is this highest energy of appreciation. So when I get into this energy of appreciation where I'm constantly sharing with people all the amazing things, or I'm just saying it out loud, or I'm praying to God and thanking God for all the things that are amazing in my life, and I just do a prayer of gratitude every day. I don't ask for anything. I just prayer of gratitude. By the way, if you pray for and, and are grateful for things that will come in your life, that is the ultimate manifestation that can happen is when you automatically start feeling appreciation for things that aren't even in your life yet. That's powerful. So you start praying with anticipation. You start praying with, and with expectancy and gratitude as if it's already in your life. We've and then you get to the third yeah, we've you got to believe, believe it, it right? We see it, right? 
Yeah. And so now the third level of gratitude, you're, you're thinking, okay, Tony, this is great. This is awesome. What's the third level of gratitude? Third <laughs> level is when my actions start matching it. And that's what I call acting in generosity. Now, generosity comes from the root word generous, which means to receive or give more than is expected or needed. And so if I give Paula a generous portion of a piece of pie, that means I gave her more than she had expected or needed. She just, wow, thank you. Like, I didn't expect that. I didn't, I didn't need that, but thank you. And by the way, the giver can't expect anything back in return because that's not truly giving. That's trading. And, and if you really want to win in life, you need to give without expecting anything back. And that's when you'll truly win. So acting in generosity means that I'm giving more love. I'm giving more time. I'm giving more money. I'm giving more um, resources and encouragement. And I don't expect anything back in return. I just genuinely give because now coming full circle, I come from a place within me where I genuinely believe I have more than enough. I am more than enough. And because I have so much, because I have enough, I have more than enough to give more money to that person that needs the money, or I have more than enough time to give an extra moment to a person in need, or I have more than enough love to share my encouragement and, I, and love with someone because I have more than enough in my life. And when you get to that highest level of gratitude and you're beginning to see life on a more than enough scale, you can dream bigger, you can think bigger, you can achieve more. You start manifesting quickly. This is when the law of attraction, the law of abundance, it comes in full circle and really starts to accelerate things. So I, was that a good ex explanation for the three levels there? It was wonderful. And, and you know, I, I want people to understand a couple of things that you don't have to be generous with money. You're going to sit here and say, well, that's great, but I don't have any extra money. Well, when you do the first two levels, you're going to get to the point you're, <laughs> you're going to understand that there's... That, that you do, but it's generosity with, with everything, you know, with, you know, one of the things, one of my favorite books is The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles and leaving everyone with the impression of increase. And that's one of the big things that, that I teach. And that, that does not mean money. It means opening the door for somebody or smiling at them or giving them a compliment or, you know, leaving a bigger tip. But it doesn't have to have anything. This abundance has nothing to do with money. Wealth has nothing to do with money. You can get to that at some point in time, but it's a mindset. And this leaving everyone with the increase, with the, uh, increase that, that's, what, that's what this generosity is about. When you understand that, that you have more than enough, you start counting your blessings and you start giving it out. You think you're being nice to somebody else by opening the door or complimenting them, and you feel better. I mean, it, it really comes back when you feel better. So, yeah, uh, so I love the three different levels of gratitude in the program that he and I both teach. Um, th that, that is how we get you to that third level of gratitude, which is generosity. Uh, but then what I'm very impressed with also, Tony, is that you have not only do you have three levels deep, but you have seven levels wide. Because I think, once again, people say, think the law of attraction and they're thinking money or they're thinking a new job. They're thinking, they're, they're thinking something to do with, with money in the bank. And um, wh when you do the seven areas wide, you really realize that we're dealing with the whole person and we're not dealing with just this one goal of trying to get ahead financially or professionally. So tell us about the seven levels across that... that that you have come up with in this program? Yeah, so um, the reason why we did seven is because there's seven days in a week. <laughs> so it's just really easy to figure out, okay, well, what are seven areas of our life that we can work in in a week's period of time, and then we can go through over a month's period of time. So there's, there's a week of awareness where all I'm doing is I'm just making you aware that you need gratitude in your life. Like what level are you functioning on? A not enough or a more than enough scale? So that's the first week. And then we go through the three levels of gratitude, but we do it in seven areas of life. So the first area is relationship, love in your life. You know, how do you perceive love in your life? And so it's the relationships you enjoy. It's the people you interact with. Um, and so it's all about relationships. Uh, the second day, we, we analyze the, your perception of time. And are you functioning on this not enough uh, of time? Like I don't have enough hours in the day. There's not enough time to get everything done that needs to get done. And so we, we do time in each of those three levels as well. Uh, the third is we do uh, money. So that is one of the three areas, one of the seven areas is the third is money. The fourth is health. And this is really, really powerful. Like 
do you take some things advantage of in your health, uh, whether it's your eyes or your ears or your pinky or your foot, you know, what are the things that we take advantage of? And so we, we go through your health and whether you believe that you have not enough health or, or you have great health. Uh, then we go through your career or special interest. Um, this is, you know, if, if you do have a career, we want you to analyze your career. If you're, you know, you're at home with children or you're, you're, you don't have a career yet, uh, we want you to analyze, well, what are your special interests? What are your talents? What are the things you're interested in? So that's the day. And then we go through a day of spirituality. Now, spirituality is not religion. Spirituality is, is this idea that there is something greater than you that can help you, that, that you have infinite potential and capacity. And, and so it's identifying, are you connected with the spiritual essence of who you are? And so there's a day of spirituality. And then the last day is really your self-image. It's oneself. And it's, it's taking a look in the mirror and being brutally honest with yourself uh, and, and really being thankful for you and the amazing uniqueness and gift that you are to this world. So those are the seven areas, relationships, time, money, health, career interests, spirituality, and oneself. And I want to say that when I took this, so I've been teaching some portion of Law of Attraction since 2011. I was certified in another program. And so I've taught it dozens of times. I've gone through dozens of training and to dozens of, and I read like Tony reads. I just, I'm a voracious reader. But I did not realize and, and I'm not good at specifics. <laughs> I'm just kind of, I'm a shotgun kind of a gal. Just get out of my way. But when I had to take a day and say, let's talk about time in my life, you know, uh, being thankful for time or being generous with time. And actually the, the week on generosity, I can say I'm generous if I'm smiling at people. I can say I'm generous to other people. But when you're starting being generous with yourself or generous it, there are seven different categories that I was not used to breaking this down to. So, I mean, there were some, there were some epiphanies for me on that and like generous with health. What does that necessarily mean? I mean, it was, it was some thinking that made me sit and go through this because I mean, you're, you're, you're hitting every aspect of your life that could fit in our seven days. But I think you've hit on every aspect of, of, of a life that people need to be looking at it. And, and I think it was so yeah. powerful to be looking at each individual aspect of your life with it, with these, you know, these gratitude colored glasses on that we have. Well, and, and to go back to your idea of time. And so for your listeners here, I would just say, do you, when you, when you're looking at your schedule for the day, is the thought pattern in your head, I have to, or I get to, ah. I have to is ungrateful. I get to is gratitude. What lens do you look at your calendar? If we, if, do you have to go to that appointment or do you get to go to that appointment? Do you have to have that lunch with that person or do you get to have that lunch with that person? You see the mind shift here? Yes. You see the shift from not enough to more than enough? That's the, that's the shift. That's the difference. By the way, I didn't mention this, but remember when I said that thinking thankfulness is two to 4%, uh -huh. they're four, two to 4% happier. Um, when you, when you feel appreciation, you're, you're four to 19%. When you're acting generously, these people report that they are 43% happier than those that don't. See, that's amazing. Just, like crazy. Well, and I bet that even goes up the more that you understand this and the more your mind actually shifts. Cause it's an attitude. This, this whole mm -hmm. thing is just a, a mindset. And, and I, and I would just think the more you do this, because I'm going through the program again because I'm teaching it now. I mean, I think it's even going to go up even higher than that. Yeah, I, I, I believe that, you know, happiness levels can, can go up to I'm 100% happier, you know? Yeah. I, oh, I yes. honestly believe that, that, that I'm 100% happier now in my life than I was or 1,000% happier. Like, obviously, those are, those are um, statistics that, that are not valid right now. But right. And they're subjective. Like, I, I mean, think... they're subjective. How do, how do, you, how do you measure those? Yeah. But, um, yeah. Uh, so one of the things I thought was interesting um, that we, you, we, we teach this to businesses. We take this in as a business model to teach them how to change their culture. And I thought one mm -hmm. of the, and I don't know if it was my research or your research, but um, that if, uh, someone is within a 90 day period, there's, a, there's like an 80% uh, retention rate and that within a 90 day period that 20% of the people will leave. But if you tell them one thing that you're appreciative of them, 
like that that goes up to you know 82 percent of them stays at, it stays at 80 and then it goes to 81 at two but when you get to three and four it spikes up to 94 and 96 that's amazing that's of retention okay. so four times in a 90-day time period if you tell somebody that you're appreciative that you're grateful of what they do that retention rate goes up to like 97 percent i mean yeah what a tool for businesses to use to make people happier, but also to, to, to keep their retention rate higher. I mean, some of, some of this information I just think is amazing. And I think it's, it's such a great thing to take everywhere, but, but changing a culture in, in a business, I think it's so important because we're in our, we're in businesses eight to 10 hours of the day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the sad majority is that most people come to work uh, with a negative mindset meaning they come to work with worst case scenarios on their mind. They come to work comparing themselves with others. They come to work entitled. Nothing is ever their fault. They come to work with a not enough lens and they just complain all the time. Those are ways that you know, like, wow, I, I need gratitude in my life. I need to, I need to shift. So where I'm always thinking about best case scenario, I know that I'm good enough. I don't need to compare myself to other people. Uh, I have expectancy instead of entitlement. I know there's always enough and I'm, I'm constantly creating, not, competing. If you get somebody that comes to you and said, Hey, here's a problem. And they don't come to you with a solution. They're probably thinking on the negative side. And uh, the, the person that's always on the positive side is going to come to you with, Hey, here was the problem, but here's five solutions, the ways you can fix it. They're constantly creating in their head. Um, and, and there's not many people in the workplace that do that. Well, I know, I don't know if people out there have read the happiness advantage by Sean A. Corr it came out, I don't know, four or five years ago. And I've read it, read it, read it. And I've incorporated it to some degree. And there's so much data that they have done on that, that when they have happiness uh, programs in businesses, that, that they also have these amazing results. But what I think is amazing, especially since I've been talking to you, is you can't force people to be happy. <laughs> you can't force people. No. But when you start having them go through this gratitude and appreciation and generosity. I mean, you can't force them to go through it, but when they, when they voluntarily go through it, they automatically become thankful. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. automatic. And once you're thankful, then you're happy. Like once again, it's the foundation of all these other programs that are out there. You got to get this done first before, before all the other stuff kind of falls into place. Can you imagine having a whole culture of individuals in an organization that are all believing that there's more than enough and they're generous with their time and their resources? They just, they know there's a project that needs to be done. So they say, you know what, I'm going to give you more time than you're paying me for. How would that be if you had employees that are willing to give you their time when they don't have to give you their time? Like well, that's because, the whole power of generosity. Because they're getting more than, than, you know, twelve dollars and fifty cents an hour, whatever their their wage is. Um, and mm -hmm. one of the other things that I I have found out um, is that this spills over. So when when you have a generosity program at work, uh, it spills over to their home lives. And if you're going to yeah. take this this gratitude program, it's going to spill over into your work life. I mean, once you're happier, everything around you changes. You change, and the vibration changes, and everything changes. Um, so I, I so think can I share? Can I share with you one? Would you mind if I shared with you just one quick example of of what this did in an organization that no, I worked I with? Would, would love for you to. That's great. Yeah. So I just I I've taken an organization through our our thirty day gratitude program. We did them in waves of about ten people. Uh, so we've taken about forty of their main employees through the through the or through the thirty day program. In the in this uh, this is an industry that does staffing. And uh, so their goals, what they had accomplished from January until August, August is when we started. So from August to now we're in December, from August to December, they have doubled their production of what they did from January to August. Wow. And that was a month ago, actually. So that, that statistic was about the beginning of November. So in wow. a, a good two to three months, they had doubled what they had done in eight months. Now, the crazy thing about this last group that I, I shouldn't say crazy, the amazing thing about this last group that I, that I just coached through, um, two marriages were saved. Now, this is out of 10 people, two marriages, people saying that this literally saved their marriage. Um, three people quit drinking or quit drugs, like they were smoking or they were drinking or doing other things. They quit those things. 
One person had an estranged relationship with their mom that they hadn't talked to her in 10 years and uh, repaired that relationship. This is all in 30 days. Two marriages, three people quit, uh, an addiction, and one person uh, now connected with their estranged mom. And their overall productivity was up 43% in the fourth quarter. That's uh, 40, 43%. You gave me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, it's very yeah. powerful. I just love this. Uh, I love this whole thing. So what do you see as the next step with you taking this gratitude program out to the, to the world? So my, my life's purpose, my life's vision, and I found this about a year and a half ago, is to wake people up to who they can become, their greater selves, their, their potential, their capacity through gratitude, to wake people up through gratitude. Um, obviously, there's a lot more to that. Uh, we want to be in businesses. We want to be uh, hiring coaches like yourself, certifying coaches. Um, but, but our goal is to flood the earth with gratitude to open people up to all the things that life coaches would teach, meaning what do you want? What's your life purpose? Let's teach you about self-image. All of those things are important, but without gratitude as the foundation, you can't dig very deep with people. And uh, so my goal is to really help everyone, even the life coaching industry in general, the executive coaching industry, is to help people understand that you must start with gratitude before you do anything else. I just think that's wonderful. So tell us about how they can get a hold of you and about your, 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 uh, your company. Yeah, so my company is called Elevated Worldwide. And uh, so you can reach us out. Uh, you can go to our website. It's called keepelevated.com. Keepelevated.com. Uh, you can go to our programs. You can find Gratishift is, is the gratitude program. It's called Gratishift. Uh, you know, you can buy it there. Uh, you can buy the program itself uh, or you can be coached through it. So there's a non-coaching coached kind of option there. And, uh, or you can reach out to Paula as well and, and uh, have her coach you. I'm sure she'd be willing to do that. Uh, we just, we love what we do and we just want to flood the earth with this product. It's an amazing product. So uh, keepelevated.com is, is where people can go to find more about us. And, and, and you teach other programs besides this. You teach ones that are much more in depth and specific about, about actually going after your dreams. But this is kind of like, mm -hmm. like we said, this is the cornerstone this is the first one that would that you would recommend i'm assuming for anybody to take and then when they're yeah when they're through that and they're they're kind of more set on what they want to do you've got some other programs that they could contact you on to to help them take their life to the next level yeah and so very briefly i'll just share with you kind of some of the other things that we do so that i i kind of liken it to soil like your your mind uh, and I love what Earl Nightingale has shared, that, that our mind is like just soil and, and whatever seed I'm going to plant into it, it, it will give back. It doesn't matter. It's, it's amoral. Uh, your subconscious mind, you plant whatever. It's called self-fulfilling prophecy in universities. You, you believe something you are long enough, you'll become it. Uh, and so we're in charge of that soil. The first thing that I have to do with soil, though, is I have to turn it. I have to loosen it up. And that's what gratitude does. Then I got to dig the hole. And digging the hole is finding your purpose, your why. Why is it that you want you know, the fruit that you want. And so you got to dig the hole and then you got to pick the seed. And that's the third thing we do is we help you create a vision of what it is that I want. What's the seed? What's the ultimate fruit I want to pluck off the tree? That's, that's the seed that we want to plant. And then we have programs that teach you about how to nurture that seed and how to pull the weeds with your self-limiting beliefs and, you know, how to leave it alone, not keep digging it up, wondering if it's going to grow or not. You just trust that that the laws of, of nature are going to help that seed grow, just like the laws of the universe are going to help your, your goal come to, to fruition. Uh, and, and so we've got all different programs to kind of take people through this process, but you just got to till the ground first. And that's why gratitude is number one. Well, Tony, I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful that you are on my program today and that you started this program. I think it's going to change a lot of lives. I think it's going to change everything. Once people start taking it, it, it is an amazing program. It's a great first step for people out there that are thinking they, they want to do something else, but you know, you feel like you're on this hamster wheel, you don't know how to get off. Well, this is the first step to get off to either contact Tony and his, his people at elevated worldwide, elevated worldwide, keep elevated.com, keep elevated.com or contact me because we can both teach you that. And Tony, thank you so much for being on my program and we hope to have you back. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And, and uh, just everyone out there, always know you are enough and there is always more than enough. Oh, I love that. And we'll be right back. And we are back from that interview with Tony Child. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. 
I want to make sure you all understand the concept of how important this gratitude area of our lives is. And when it's not just writing in a journal, which is a wonderful first step, and that's what I have taught for a long time, but that is something that stays internal, which is where it begins. You're writing something and you're feeling better because you're thankful for it. But when you decide to internalize that thankfulness into a feeling, into your subconscious mind, and you start telling people how much that you appreciate them, you're now actually giving this thankfulness away. You're telling people how much you appreciate them. You're starting to have a more value on these seven different categories that we've talked about. And then the next, the next step is generosity. And that's when you're actually starting to understand that you are enough, that you have more than enough where you are right now, and that you can start giving some of this away, some of your time and energy and love and, and some of the spirituality. When you start understanding that you have enough to give away, that is when the magic happens. So there's a great metaphor or analogy about the River Jordan. So the River Jordan is a very vibrant river over in Israel, and it flows into two different seas. It flows into the Dead Sea, and it flows into the Sea of Galilee. It's the same river. But when it flows into the Dead Sea, there's no outlet. It, it just keeps getting more salty, and, and the, the sediment keeps getting uh, stronger and stronger and nothing lives in the Dead Sea because there's no outlet there's no currency it's not giving anything away it is keeping everything and then the same river the River Jordan flows into the Sea of Galilee and the Sea of Galilee actually flows into uh, to the Mediterranean and it is actually giving giving away what it has received and it is a vibrant sea it has fish and it is beautiful and it is it is a living vibrant entity because it gives away what it gets there's an energy flow there's a currency it's a current that's why they call it currents so if you are the dead sea and you don't think you have enough and you try to keep everything you're not going to grow. You're not going to have an abundant life. But when you realize that the same source, the same source, which is source, which is our infinite intelligence, which is God, it gives both things to someone that keeps it there and doesn't appreciate what it has. Or if you're the Sea of Galilee, you actually absorb what you get from the source you appreciate it, it grows, it's abundant, but you have to give it away because that's where the currency is. So I hope this has made a difference to some degree in how you look at things. And if you're struggling with anything to do with the law of attraction, I think this is the very first cornerstone that we need to be looking at. And I would love for you to, to write me at Paula at LawyerOfAttraction.com. I am teaching this new program, the Gratitude Program, as well as my Your Outrageous Life program. So I would love for anybody to, um, to send me an email if they'd like to discuss this. I want to thank everyone that's done that uh, in, in the past. I appreciate all the, the good feedback that I'm getting. Uh, it's really important to me to uh, know that, that you're enjoying what we're, we're putting out there for you because I want everyone to know this information. And remember, it's not my information. It's the universal laws. It's the information that have been passed down by the ancient sages. I've just been fortunate enough to be able to learn them from, from some mentors in the present day. So once again, I would love to have you uh, write me and get a hold of me at lawyerofattraction.com. There's a free seven-day uh, challenge that you can sign up for. In addition... Uh, there's the cruise that's coming up in April. I've been told it's really um, filling up fast. So if you want to go, I would love to have you. Make sure you mention your, my name so that you get to be on my team and we can do some stuff together. Uh, and as always, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate the fact that you've been on this journey with me. And as Ram Das says, we are all just walking each other home. So until next time, have a wonderful week and thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining Paula Kid Casey on Lawyer of Attraction Radio Show. For more information about Paula programs and her book, please visit www.lawyerofattraction.com. 
Until next week, may you experience the magic of manifesting genuine abundance.